Transfiguration. It's one of those Sunday that happen each year like Trinity Sunday or Pentecost when many ministers are not quite sure what to say or how to explain it. Um, when we look at the text this year, uh, the lectionary uh, recommended text from the Gospel according to Mark, we have Jesus taking his inner circle, uh, Peter, James, John. He takes them to the top of a mountain. And then the text says he's transfigured, his clothes becoming white as, as no soap or can wash it and make them white. And then Elijah and Moses shows up. And there's a voice that comes from a cloud ahead of them, uh, just uh, over them, that says, This is my son, the beloved, listen to him. And in this day and age, I would say, the question is always, how does this make sense? Uh, how could all of this be explained in a logical way? Maybe one way to approach this text, this event, is to see it as a story that is not as much as Jesus was changed, but the disciples. Throughout the Gospel, on many occasions, Jesus taught to the crowd, taught to the disciple, and especially the disciples struggle to understand it. They don't get it. For example, will, Jesus will tell a parable. He would say, explain it to us, Master. We don't understand. He will explain the meaning of the parable. Do you still don't understand? And you have the feeling that Jesus will go like, oh, let's start over one more time. <laughs> this kind of repetition that they don't see, they don't understand. Even, even who Jesus is and the gospel according to Mark is one of those uh, questions they have in the first part of the text is, who is this man? How could it be? And maybe this story of the transfiguration is that time, that moment when they got it, when they understood who was really in front of them. It's like uh, when we say the expression seeing things from a different light. Maybe uh, you know someone for a while and there's an event or the person will say a sentence or do something that would make us discover another side of that person. A side that was always there from the beginning, present all those years, but we might not know it or pay attention to it or truly understand. So we see another side of that person. We see uh, the true colors of that person. And maybe transfiguration is this moment of awakening of the divine for the disciple. And maybe it's the same invitation for all of us. The divine is already there around us. God is there. The presence of the risen Christ can be lived all around us. That we notice it, we don't notice it, it's there. And sometimes we have those moments that make us wonder, that makes us open our eye to this presence open our mind, our soul, our heart, and we say, wow, wow, this is truly amazing. And kind of, sometimes it may change our, our events that can change our lives, sometimes not as spectacular. It could be a small thing, but still it's, it's special. We, we will say sometimes it was magical. You had to be there to truly understand. And it's maybe that, maybe it's one of the meaning of this story of transfiguration. An invitation to all of us to open our eyes to what it is right in front of our eyes, in front of our face, in front of us, 
all those years. Once again, thank you very much for listening. I remain the lectionary man, Reverend Stefan Vermette. And until next time, take care of yourself and bye-bye.